even though ConAgra is a low growth company, its current low valuation and high yield make it a compelling investment opportunity. Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGrass, the fundamentals analyzer software tool, aka Mr. Valuation. This is part two of a three-part series I'm doing on a couple of really prominent consumer staple companies. Now, why I've picked these companies over many choices that I've had is because I like them for the current high yield, I like them for the valuation, and I like them for the intermediate to immediate term investment opportunity they provide. So let's go ahead and get into the fast graphs on ConAgra Foods today. As you can see by reviewing the operating earnings graph of ConAgra, that's the orange line in this graph, the company's been profitable every year and their earnings have been moderately cyclical. You know, they're, they have a couple of periods where they have a real strong rise in earnings and that's usually followed by a lag in earnings or a drop. As you see here, we went through three or four years of very little growth and then a sag and then we had some high growth again. But the bottom line, if you go all the way back, you know, to the beginning of their fiscal year, which is May, of 31, 2003, we see that this company, including estimates, has only achieved a 2.78% growth rate. Now, when we put monthly closing stock prices on the graph, we also see that the company's stock price has tracked that. But you see very obvious periods of overvaluation when the price is above the orange line. You see very obvious periods of undervaluation. And again, overvaluation, undervaluation, and currently we see the stock price being significantly undervalued. So the bottom line here is that the less optimum time to buy the stock would be when the valuations are high, when they're above the orange line, like you see here, or like you once again see here. And I'm just picking, arbitrarily picking spots. You know, these are not good times to buy the stock where you could make, you know, decent rates of return. As you can see, this period here from August 26th of 2016 to July 28th of 2023, you'd have only earned 1.53% a year, and then the stock has even dropped more. So high valuations are not a period of time to buy a stock like this. But if you can buy this stock when the valuations are low and it just returns to normal, you can get double-digit returns like you see from March of 2709 to June of 2015 here, you had a period of several years where you averaged over 16% a year and could have doubled your money. So valuation matters and it matters a lot. What makes ConAgra a compelling valuation or stock today is its valuation, which has created the opportunity to get a 4.65% dividend yield. Now, if you look at this stock since coming out of the recession, you can also see that their dividend has grown rather nicely over time, not real fast, but very nicely consistently. They've either maintained the dividend or grew it a little bit this whole time. And there you can buy them with a 4.65% dividend yield right now. And it's this compelling valuation. If I would calculate the potential performance of the stock moving back to a conservative 13.65% multiple, and then you can buy the company today at a 10.91 multiple. I want to make that clear. So you would get, you know, moderate growth here, 4 or 5% growth going forward, but you get some PE expansion and some dividend, you could turn that into a 15% rate of return. If the stock were to move back into alignment with its 15 PE ratio, which I think it deserves to have, you could make just under 19% annualized rates of return. In both cases, buying the stock today looks very, very attractive. Now, evaluating this stock from a standpoint of some other metrics here, since it's a dividend-paying stock, I like to look at operating cash flow. And you can see that, you know, since, you know, our 2010 year here that we're measuring, this is a 16-year time frame, including the estimate data, you can see the cash flow has covered it. Now, the cash flow did drop for the last three or four years, but is expected to recover substantially going forward. But even during this drop, we still had operating cash flow of $2.07, adequately covering a $1.32 dividend that the company is expected to pay. So long term from here, this company looks very attractive. It's undervalued based on almost any metric you could possibly look at. If you look at it from a standpoint of price to EBITDA, you can see that it's expected to have pretty strong EBITDA growth going forward. And again, EBITDA would indicate a double-digit rate of return on the stock of over 20% if it moved back 
to only 8.7 times EBITDA, and you can currently buy it at 6.3 times EBITDA. Now, when you look at this company from a sales point of view, sales growth has been relatively slow, but it has recovered pretty significantly since the beginning of 2016. We've got sales growth has averaged about 5.67%, and the stock price has really you know, sort of responded to that. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with ConAgra, just a real quick look by going into their website. These are some of their major you know, products that people are aware of, and this is a full list. You know, you've got you know, Fleischmann, Jiffy Pop, LaCroy, Mrs. Butterworth, Ready Whip, very fa- popular in my house. <laughs> Orville Redenbacher popcorn and so on. So this company is just basically a f- food company, a staples company, and it does offer a really exciting opportunity right now to invest in this stock. I want to emphasize the key factors here. This is a slow growth company. Anytime you invest in a stock, you ought to know what the company is capable of generating. When you invest in a stock at fair valuation, I think this is critically important. When you invest in a stock at fair valuation, you're generally positioning yourself to participate fully in what the company delivers as a business. When you buy the stock, when it's significantly undervalued, you get to participate to a much higher extent than the company is capable of generating. So even though this is a relatively low growth investment, if we look forward and look at the forecasting calculator, the company's only expected to grow on average of about 2.7%. They're expecting a moderately down year this year, which is what got the stock price down. We're looking at 4% growth the following year, 4.5% after that. The long-term growth forecast is only 1.82%. But let's run these numbers out to our logical conclusion. If this were to only trade at 13.9 times earnings, a discount, based on a 2.7% growth using the Graham Dodd formula, you'd stand to make about 16% if the company earned these earnings estimates and if it traded at a 13.9. If it got up more to in line with the 15 multiple, here's 15.29, then you could earn almost 20%, 19.73%. The normal multiple for this stock has been about 14, and if you base it on that, that would give you a 16.92. So what we've got here is an opportunity to take this slow-growing company with very, very modest debt, only 39.92% debt to capital. It's a triple B-minus investment-grade rated company. It's got an earnings yield over 9% and a dividend yield of 4.65%. So I think if you were going to invest in ConAgra and wanted to have a staple a, a relatively you know stable company that isn't real risky, and you could buy it at these low valuations, it would be a good time to be taking a position in ConAgra for at least the intermediate term. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, proudly bringing you part two of this three-part series on consumer staples. Today we covered Con- ConAgra. In our next video, we're going to look at Kellogg. Um, these are, again, really slower-growing stocks. I think it's very important that I reiterate that. But they are companies that can be very meaningful to your portfolio returns if you buy them at the right valuations. If you like the video, give me a like. Subscribe to the channel if you don't already. And take a look at FastGrass. What a great tool to help you make you know, solid long-term and intermediate-term investment decisions and to keep yourself grounded, especially during tumultuous times. Thanks for watching, and we'll be talking to you again real soon.